How about you? Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. In this video, we're going to cover the basic elements of the auger and how it's used. All right, stick around. Let's talk about this auger for a little bit. This thing, man, will save your back and you can get a lot of work done in a short amount of time digging holes on your property. A couple things to consider though while you're doing that is if you're gonna be digging some holes in an area where you need to call before you dig, then make sure you call your utility companies or your water companies or whatever the case may be. Uh, because we actually, we're gonna use this for fencing all across the, the property here, but we're actually gonna put a privacy fence up between our barn home and our guest home and I'm going to use post hole diggers because I've got some electrical lines that are buried from a service box to another meter there. So I don't want to risk the chance of trying to go into some electrical with this auger bit. So I'm just going to do it by hand to think I can finesse it a little better. But uh, the, the auger does connect to your three point hitch. And later on in the video, I'll show you how, to, how I personally put uh, the auger onto the tractor. Uh, but you want to be real safe when you're operating it. Some of the newer ones come with a plastic shaft that covers the PTO, uh, the PTO shaft here, and it's got a, a plastic sleeve, and it's got boots on each end over the CV joints there. And uh, so that kind of protects you. You know, if you have long hair, you know, make sure you got it tied up, maybe put in a bun or put, a, put under a ball cap. Uh, if you have any more of those hair nets from when you were a teenager working at McDonald's, throw those on, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Uh, but you know, loose clothing, things like that. Always be mindful of the fact that these rotating parts are going to rotate quick and they will snatch you up in a heartbeat. So just be real careful with that. This is a two person job for a beginner like me. Uh, so if you, if you're a guy or gal that uses an auger regularly and you figured out, you figured out how to use this auger as a one man job, leave a comment below because I'd love to learn to kind of master this auger technique, if you will. And so if you, uh, you know, a lot of people have asked me, how do I leave a comment? I've had that sent to me a couple times. What you do, if you're watching on a mobile device, you turn your mobile device up uh, vertical and you scroll all the way to the thumbnails at the bottom, scroll past them. And at the very bottom, it will say add comment. And that's where you put your comment into the video section. So leave a comment. And uh, as you're scrolling, there's going to be a red button that says subscribe. You can hit that as well. We'd appreciate that. But back to the auger. The auger is a, is a two-man job, in my opinion, and because you're, you're going to need to get it level. You're going to need to get it uh, straight up and down for when you start digging this hole. And there's a technique, uh, and we'll get later. Later on, I'll talk about some of the techniques that I use, but there's techniques to actually keeping this thing straight while you're digging. But first of all, I want to show you how I actually hook the auger up to the tractor. All right, let's take a look at that process. Okay, when you're putting the auger on, what I like to do is I like to work from the top, bottom, left, and right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to position my pin that's going to go. Oh, first thing you got to do is take your top link off. If you notice, there's no top link associated with your three-point hitch here because your auger, the top of your auger post is going to go into that particular section. All right, so let's go ahead and put it here. Like so. So I get the top put on. Now I want to put the PTO shaft on. Now I need to go to the left side, to the right side. And on my Mahindra, my bottom linkage are adjustable so I can swing it out. But I always start with the left side. Get that out of the way there. Oops. I forgot to take that pin out. There we go. That's much better. You can kind of see now why this is a two-person job. So you put the left side in, resecure it. I'm not going to put this pin in yet. Let me pop over to the right side. 
Do this right side. Take the pin out. Just like so. Now that I've got the pins on the left side and the right side, now that I've got, actually, now that I've got the top secured, the PTO shaft secured, the left and right side secured, now I can put my pins back into my adjustable linkage my, so they don't sway. You can see now that I've got the auger attached to the tractor, how it's at an angle. And so what you want to do is you want to be, you know, this is only because that's how I lined the tractor up when I placed the auger into the ground. But you really want to make sure that you, you have someone on the, the working end of this auger that has a level, a four, at least a four foot level that they can stick beside this thing when you start to drill the hole and get it nice and square and plumb. And, that way your hole is not going to be crooked. All right, so let's actually talk about some of the techniques and let's see how the auger itself gets engaged. Different tractors have different apparatuses for starting their PTO. And if you look here on the Mahindra 4540, I have a lever. It says, look at there, it says PTO on it, just in case I ever forget. It's in the off position now. And if I move it back, you can see in accordance with that sticker, it goes into the on position. All right, so it should uh, be in the off position before you start the engine, which we will do. And that's how I will engage the PTO to actually get the shaft to turn. But what about how do I get it up and down? Well, on my particular tractor, my lever controls are here on the black handle. All right, so that's how... You can actually see the, I don't know if it shows up on the video or not, but you can see the words lift and lower, lift and lower. That may not show up too, there it goes. Lift and lower on my tractor model. Now yours may be different, or your, if you don't have a 4540 or 4550, it will be different. Okay, now you know a little bit about how to turn the PTO on to engage the, the, the PTO gearbox here on the auger. That gets the, the auger bit to start turning. You also seen how you raise and lower, lift and lower the auger bit to go in and out of the uh, hole that you're digging. But something else I wanna mention, if you have a clutch driven tractor like I do, if your tractor is in gear, and you release the clutch. Now remember, because you got to push the clutch in to engage the PTO. And then when you let that clutch out, if it's in gear, guess what's going to happen? The tractor's going to take off on you, right? Okay, so you got to make sure that your tractor is in neutral. Now there is a technique that you use when you back up to the holes uh, that you're going to be digging, especially if the terrain is not level. I always, I always back up downhill so that I'm going uphill uh in just in case right uh so that's my technique if you have a different technique let us know but anyway so make sure your tractor is in neutral unless you need it to be in gear and what i mean by that is it once you put your auger bit into the ground this is important and once you put your auger bit into the ground you need to get it level and straight and square so how do you do that you manipulate the tractor or you can manipulate this has some play in it so you get it a little off the ground, get it nice and straight, and then you have the operator set the, the auger onto the ground. Again, two-person job for beginners like me. And you set this onto the ground, and then you start to dig your hole. If it's not level, if it's not, you know, you gotta go back and forth a little bit, then you need your tractor to be in gear, pull up some to kind of get it back, press in the clutch to kind of ease off on it. You'll, you'll get all that down though. But just keep in mind, this thing, the tractor really needs to kind of be in neutral when you start this thing or you'll be like, boom, you'll take off. If you have a clutch driven uh, uh, tractor like I do, if you have a, a hydrostatic or a shuttle shift, don't know, I can't help you because I don't own one. All right, cool. All right, let's look at a couple of clips of, of actually me using the auger around the property, okay? Check this stuff out.
The auger is an essential piece of equipment to have for your tractor on your farm if you plan on putting fence posts up. Uh, I'm telling you, it will save your back, it will make quick work. You can set all kind of fence posts on, you know, when you're doing it with power as opposed to going out there and, you know, all this jazz. <laughs> That's tough work, it's hard on your back. So, especially as you get older, you're like, doggone, this, this stinks. I don't want to be doing all this, and especially in the summertime. But you got to plan around the temperature, right? Anyway, so using the auger, you saw a couple of techniques they use, putting the level against the bit and things like that. You can see how you can manipulate the tractor back and forth and... The, the most important thing though is once you get the auger bit where you need it to be, then what you need to do is before you engage that PTO, you've got to have that second person that's helping you step away because I'm telling you this thing, I mentioned it earlier in the video, it'll snatch you up in a heartbeat. The, the, the important factor is to get it started square first. And hopefully you're on as level ground as possible but to get it started square first and then as the as the auger bit goes into the ground uh, it stays a little more uh, straight if you will and then if you need to adjust like we mentioned earlier you can manipulate it with the tractor with kind of easing off the clutch or pressing the gas or whatever it is that you do on your tractor but that's the auger listen that's a that's a good piece of equipment you know we've got a couple more uh, implements and attachments that we're going to show in this series of videos and basic overview stuff beginner stuff I'm not the expert uh, there's a lot of people out there that are obviously tons better than I am and, and we love for those kind of people to come in here and make comments about hey you know this will help you get better this will help you learn how to uh, employ your auger in a in more efficient manner and that kind of I love that kind of stuff and uh, I'm all about learning and I'm all about trying to get better and I'm all about trying to help other people get better. And that's the great thing about this channel is the people like you uh, who come in here, they come make good comments, good constructive comments to help us all get better. It's, it's pretty cool. So, and our channel is growing, it's growing really fast and uh, it's because uh, we have some good subscribers and we have a, a good community that we've built up here and we'd love for you to be part of it. As a matter of fact, you'll see a picture of the barn pop up here. If you click on that, it'll take you to our subscribe page. Come on and join us. We have a good time. We also have an Instagram and Facebook account, Hamiltonville Farm, a Twitter account at Hamiltonville Farm. Go ahead and take out. So look at some of the pictures of our barn. It's pretty cool. We're going to do some barn videos coming up soon, and uh, we'd love for you to tag along. Okay, we'll see you on the next video. Y'all take care.